to Tessera's Nerf Room, and welcome to day two of the Dart Zone review a thon Today is Tuesday, and in today's episode, we're going to be reviewing the Dart Zone Aeon Pro X. This blaster is very, very important, because the original Aeon Pro was one of the worst blasters I have ever used in my entire life. I hated the Aeon Pro so much. It was uncomfortable, it was built like crap, the prime was atrocious, and it really didn't do anything it was trying to do well, and it cost as much as a retaliator, with an upgrade spring included. So this one, costing the exact same price as the original, hopefully will fix some of the issues that the original one faced. So how well did it do at fixing those issues? Let's find out. <music> So the Aeon Pro X is a 2024 release out of Dart Zone in the Adventure Force Pro series, which means this is a Walmart exclusive that is supposed to shoot 150 FPS. It's got a lot of exciting features that I am really stoked to talk about, starting with the design. Removing the included scar muzzle and the front iron sight, which is just a removable Picatinny attachment point, we have a design here and I'm excited to talk about it. This design wasn't really well received by a lot of people, mainly because of this large blue and purple decal, which is visible from both sides. It's a very strange clash to the orange. It would have made a lot more sense if it was just this part right here in the middle and not with all this like camouflage patterning on the outside with these three like white stripe looking things here. It's a really, really weird looking print. I don't mind the way that it looks at all. I think that this print looks cool and is a fun contrast to the rest of the blaster's pretty simplistic, basic looking design. The blaster does look pretty cool. I think it looks better than the original Aeon Pro in basically every way. There's a lot more intricate lines and a lot more intricate patterning than the strange kind of realistic gun looking design that the original one went for. I like the muzzle end of this a lot better with this sort of grill that's visible to show off the barrel so that you can see in there and you can kind of see the internals working a little bit. It is honestly a really cool design and I love the Picatinny rails on the side. Like I don't really have any complaints with this design besides mainly just this thing being here being really, really distracting. I mean, it's distracting. I don't really think it looks bad, but it's very noticeable and it's really in your face. And as I mentioned a moment ago, this blaster does include a scar muzzle. And this is the type of scar muzzle that was included with this blaster. It has this sort of ridge on the outside of it on one end only. So if you put it in like this, you can fit it into a muzzle. And if you put it on the other way, you can put it on something like a Harrier or a Caliburn and it'll have a tight fit. That's pretty cool. And with this blaster, I don't really think it looks that good. It just kind of looks really goofy sticking out of the front of the blaster. However, this front sight, on the other hand, is one of the smartest attachments I've seen. It fits right onto the front of the blaster. You don't really have to think about it. You can just put it right on. And if you'll notice, the priming handle has rear iron sights, which perfectly line up with the front iron sight. So you can prime it and then hold it like a pistol and aim using the, the freaking priming handle and the front iron sight. They even included this tiny divot in the front of the priming handle to make sure you have a clear view all the way to the front iron sight and this front stop doesn't obstruct it. That's pretty cool. Let's talk about the ergonomics. This blaster features a main grip and a top prime, as well as an end strike stock attachment point, which the original didn't have. And this thing already makes this blaster a million times better than the original, and I will explain why in just a moment. But starting with the main grip, it's really good. Very, very comfortable, very nice size. It is a little bit thin up closer to the top. It's not really that bad down close to the bottom, but it definitely works. It works pretty good for this blaster, and I wouldn't mind this being on like a bigger primary size blaster, <coughs> the Nexus Pro X, <coughs> and it definitely is a nice, comfortable improvement over the original. Not just because of the shape and the size, but also because the original Aeon Pro's grip was mounted as a separate 
piece onto the blaster shell, which meant that it could rock side to side and it didn't have any form of stability whatsoever besides the like three screws that were holding it in place. This one, the orange part of the plastic sinks all the way into the grip and the grip itself is just a piece of plastic mounted on top of it. So it is really, really stable and it feels rock solid on this blaster. There is no stability issue with this grip whatsoever and I absolutely love it. As for the top prime, this is actually the only part of the blaster that I would argue the original Aeon Pro was better. And the reason for that is not because this priming handle isn't necessarily uncomfortable, but because it's a little bit painful. So you see right here, you can see these ridges that have been built onto the priming handle to give you a better grip when you hold on to it, since it is a 150 FPS spring and it's got a pretty heavy prime for that. The problem is this texturing that they put on the sides of the priming handle, not on the top, but just on the sides. It's a sort of kind of matte, like gravelly style feel that they have on the side of it. And after you've shot this blaster for a few minutes, it begins to aggressively dig into the palm of your hand. I don't know if it's just me, but I find this to become a pretty painful blaster to hold and prime after just a few minutes of using it. The way simple fix for this would just be to sand down that gravelly texture and honestly just sand down these ridges a little bit or just completely flatten it out and make this a smooth priming handle all in all. Because honestly, with the four stop and back stop, you don't need this kind of texturing on it whatsoever. But they put it there and as such, I have to talk about it. Now let's talk about the stock attachment point. So obviously, yes, it's an N-Strike stock attachment point. You can take a regulator stock and put it on and any blaster with this stock on it immediately becomes 50% more comfortable. Honest to God, this stock is so good. I want to review just the stock one of these days, but I digress. It is a regulator stock on this blaster. It's really comfortable, yada, yada, yada. You get the point. What's so special about this freaking stock attachment point? Two things specifically. One, if you'll notice, there are these tiny holes built into the sides, which just so happen to be the correct diameter to put a worker swiveling, a worker swiveling sling mount into the side of it. So you can put a sling mount onto the stock attachment point if you don't plan on using it. You just want to use this thing as a top prime kind of mag fed sidearm thing, which is brilliant. But the other thing addresses the biggest complaint that people had with the original Aeon Pro over the original Nexus Pro. If you'll notice, there are two metal screws that are on this side and two on this side. If you unscrew those, this pops right off and you have a tiny little twistable knob that you can twist and the spring comes right out, just like with the Nexus Pro. Thank you, Dart Zone, for including this feature on this blaster. Because honestly, that was everyone's biggest complaint with the original Aeon Pro, having to fully disassemble the blaster to access the spring. This blaster fixes it and gives you a stock attachment point just to add on to it. That's wonderful! So how does this blaster work? Well, it is a magazine-fed top prime enabled springer. So you take your mag, you put it right in, you don't have to prime the blaster first since this blaster comes equipped with a skinny pusher. Thank you, Dart Zone, finally giving us a blaster with a freaking skinny pusher in it. You pull this back, you push it forward, you can fire once. Or it's got slam fire. Let's talk about the smoothness of operation, the triggers in the mag releases, the safety, and every other quality of life thing that is in this blaster. First of all, the triggers and the mag insertion. Mag insertion into this blaster is really, really nice. The mag well is flared, which makes it incredibly easy to guide a Talon mag or any form of standard short dart magazine into the mag well, and it has a very satisfying click when you put it all the way in. For the mag release, this is the best mag release I've ever used because it does two things and it does both things very well. First of all, it's a big paddle style mag release that you can just pull back and pull the magazine out. So if you like to do this, you can easily do that. But more importantly is this second little notch right here. This you would think is a sort of like in middle finger style thing that you would push forward, but it's not. If you put your middle finger and hook it on it, you can pull your middle finger back and it will actuate the mag release which means that without touching the mag well at all while using it, you can mag drop the blaster. You don't have to break your grip. You don't have to apply pressure forwards and make it harder to hold onto the blaster. You can treat it like a strife rev trigger that's just extended forwards a little bit and mag drop without thinking about it. That is heavenly. I love this, and I hope this comes back on every Springer they ever make. It's amazing. I love this mag release 
so much, I can't explain it at all. But let's talk about the other stuff, like the trigger, the safety, and the top prime. The top prime on this blaster, it's so much better than the originals. Priming it back is a very smooth and buttery experience, and it clicks when it hits the rear position. Pushing it forwards is pretty smooth, and once again, it clicks when it hits the forward position. I can't really figure out how to uh, prime it again or deprime it since this button right here, you have to push it in really far and you really can't, there we go. It's it's really fiddly, but you can do it. And uh, shotgunning this blaster is way more annoying than with the original. That's one thing that I think the original did better. But let's talk about the trigger pull on that note. This trigger has just a tiny, tiny little bit of give, but once you get past that give, it is such a responsive trigger. It just goes pop, and it is such a nice trigger pull. The trigger is smaller. It's got a shorter travel. It's a lot more responsive. The spring in there is better. Honestly, like 90% of the function here is so much better than on the originals. I have no comparison. And the safety on this blaster is another improvement over the original. Minus the fact that it's set in so that the blaster shell covers it, it is very snappy, which means that you have no chance of accidentally safety or activating the blaster if you don't want to. The only issue that I have with this is how far away it is. It's really far forwards and I can just barely not reach it with my middle finger, so I have to break my grip a little to push the safety in. real complaint with this blaster at this point is the fact that the grip on the scar muzzle is so tight that it's begun scratching the sides of it. Yeah. So what mod potential does the Aeon Pro X have? Well, besides the fact that you can literally do whatever the hell you want with this blaster and there's literally no limitations with it whatsoever, enabling you to put scar muzzles, bead car muzzles, changing the spring, putting stock attachment points, put like, you could probably put an Enstrex barrel attachment point on this. There's probably a 3D printed attachment that'll fit in here. It's covered in picatinny rails. It's comfortable. It's built well. It shoots well. It works well. It's accurate. It's comfortable. Like, it, everything about it is cool. Nah, there's really no mod potential with this thing. I mean, just ignore all that good stuff. Yeah, there, there really isn't anything that you can do with this blaster. So what do I think of it? This blaster is awesome. This blaster absolutely rocks. For an Aeon Pro recreation, this thing does it so well. It really delivers justice to that original blaster. It sucks. I was really excited for that blaster when I first saw it, and the fact that it was so bad just was infuriating to me. But this blaster redeems it. This blaster is so much better than the original. The only, I have two complaints with it. The freaking roughness of the priming handle and the fact that the scar muzzle attachment is so tight. I mean, there's no reason for it to be as tight as it is, but it isn't even that much of a complaint because that just makes the scar muzzle even more stable. This blaster is freaking amazing. And the fact that you can pick it up for the same price as the original and everything about it has been improved and like everything is done better. Everything feels better. There's better plastic quality here. There's better springs here. The spring that it's using is better. Everything is better is mind blowing to me. It just pisses me off that the original was expensive as it is, because in comparison, the original absolutely freaking sucks! If you would like to purchase an Aeon Pro X, I will happily link it in the description below, and I definitely do recommend picking this thing up if you want a good little springer that you could just take to games. Please do not get a Zuru long shot if this thing is sitting on the shelf next to it. 
please seriously do not buy a zuru long shot if you see an aeon pro x sitting next to it i cannot stress this enough the zuru long shot is five dollars more and does everything this thing is trying to do wrong just buy this one i beg of you the fact that the Zuru long shot works with full lengths is not worth it at all. You're getting scabbed if you buy that thing. I'm sick of hearing that argument. So yeah, thank you guys for watching. Bye.